Hello, my name is Homer Knox and I'm with MenTeachingMen.com. I'm at the Life Center at Bradenton, Florida. I'm going to be teaching on Mark chapter 15. Uh, it's always a joy to be here at the Life Center. The Life Center is a Christian men's residential discipleship program. And I'm always happy, I'm always glad to be, to be working with the men. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Vernon McGee for giving me insight on the, chat, on the book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark's teachings, and so we, we thank him. He's gone on to be with the Lord, but, but I appreciate that. Uh, the other thing is we're going to be using the New American Standard Bible for our scripture translations. All my teachings are on the menteachingmen.com website. My notes are there, and you're certainly welcome to look that up, and you can download the notes and use for God's glory if you so like. Well, we talked about repentance last time. Repentance, we've done some research here. It's a change of mind from what I have done. I've sinned. I've sinned. I, I don't want to do that anymore. And so the next thing that has to come is a hatred of the sin. If you don't hate your sin, you're going to be back in it. And so I hated to be untruthful. I hated not to be tithing. All those things I hated. And that helped me to repent. And next thing is you ask forgiveness. If you've been doing it, you need to get forgiveness for it. And that's pretty simple. Uh, again, by the blood of Jesus, you get forgiveness by the blood of Jesus. And the final thing is your persistent endeavor to walk in holiness and get out of that sin. You're persistent, persistent. Okay, so that's, rep that's repentance. Uh, let's review chapter 14, the Gospel of Mark. Uh, Jesus is anointed for burial. Uh, Judith breaks away from righteousness. Jesus is taken into custody and he's, he's, he's tried and convicted before the Sanhedrin, which is the religious council. Uh, Jesus confesses himself as God. Uh, the high priest tears his clothes and he nullifies his high priesthood office. And then we have Peter's denial and then his repentance. Jesus is very loving to Judith right up to the end. Uh, when, when Judith commits suicide, he, and he will work with us the same way. But what happened to Judith was he got this hard heart because of sin, and that locked him in. He didn't repent, and it locked him in, and then he killed himself. You know, it's the same with us. You have to be very careful with that heart. You don't get that hard heart, and sin will do that. So once you find you're sinning, repent right away. Repent, get, the, get rid of that right away. Occasionally, men leave here. I mean, okay, all the time, men leave here. And so I drive up and down 14th Street because I come here, and I see him. You know, and I haven't stopped for a while. I haven't seen one I could talk to for a while, but, but I've stopped there many a times. Just, hey, buddy, what, what's happening? How are you doing? What's up? And their heart's heart, you can tell right away. You can tell right away. And so it's just a shame. You have to, you have to try to prevent that. In this chapter, chapter 15, we're going to see Jesus mocked. We're going to see him mistreated. We're going to see him condemned. We're going to see him crucified and killed by Pilate. Jesus, due to his sinless life, is the only person that could make this sacrifice for us. We're going to do a little bit here in Mark on what happened to Jesus. I hold, hold this whole chapter is on what happened to Jesus. What I do toward Easter, uh, I, there's a teaching I do on the, on the last days of Jesus' life, but I read the Gospels through about the crucifixion because this only gives a little bit and there's a lot more uh, that's in the Gospels that, that you, you'd, be, you'd be good to get into. you. In Mark 15, 1, again, the New American Standard Bible, and early in the morning, the chief priest with the elders and scribes and the whole council immediately held a consultation and binding Jesus, they led him away and delivered him up to Pilate. Well, they delivered him to Pilate because Rome was the only one that could execute a person. And so that's in the John 18, 31, if you'd like to look at that reference. And in, in verse 2, and I've underlined uh, some of these scriptures dealing with Pilate. In verse 2, and Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? And answering, he said to him, It is as you say. Well, we know that Christ is not going to deny himself. That's in 2 Timothy 2.13. And the chief priest began to accuse him harshly. And Pilate was questioning him again, saying, Do you make no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. And Jesus made no further answer, so Pilate was what? Amazed. 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 That's right. In verse 6, Now at the feast, Pilate used to release for them any one prisoner whom they requested. The man named Barabbas had been imprisoned with the insurrectionist who had committed murder in the insurrection. 
And the multitude went up and began to ask him to do as he had been accustomed to do for them. And Pilate answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? Well, the king of the Jews is used 17 times in the Bible. The first time was when? The Magi, that's right. Pilate formulated this term at the trial, but that's the only other place that term is used. Very interesting, very interesting. And in verse 10, for he was aware that the chief priest had delivered him up because of envy. But the chief priest stirred up the multitude to ask him to release Barabbas for them instead. <coughs> Jesus is going to take the place of a condemned murder, isn't he? And Jesus does the same for us. We are all guilty of sin. We're all guilty. And Jesus took our punishment, didn't he? In verse 12, and answering again, Pilate was saying to them, then what shall I do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? I mean, that's the question, isn't it? What are we going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with Jesus? What am I going to do with Jesus in our life? What are we going to do with him? And they shouted back, crucify him. Wasn't this the same group that, that said Hosanna in the highest? They see he was coming into Jerusalem. Wasn't it the same group of guys here? My, oh, my. In verse 14, but Pilate was saying to them, why? What evil has he done? And they shouted all the more, crucify him. And wishing to satisfy the multitude, Pilate released Barabbas for them. And having Jesus scourged, he delivered him to be crucified. Well, you know what scourging is. Scourging, they take a rope, it's frayed, and they tie, uh, they embedded it with stones and, and glass. And then they beat you with that. And wow. It tears into your skin and they pull it back and it just makes you a bloody, a bloody cut up mess. That's scourging. Well, we have mob rule here, don't we? The mobs are going crazy, and they're ruling, and Pilate is following them. What charge did Pilate bring up for the judgment? He didn't bring up any charge, did he? There's no charge here listed. We don't find you guilty. He didn't see anything. Let's go back to Pilate and the verses that I've underlined here. Are you the king of the Jews? That's the first thing he says. Then it says that Pilate was amazed. And then it says, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? And then he says, he was aware that the chief priests have delivered him up because of envy. In verse 12 it says, and what shall I do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? Then in verse 14, Pilate saying to them, why, what evil has he done? Hmm. And wishing to satisfy the multitude. And then it says, and after having Jesus scourged, he delivered him to be crucified. Very interesting about Pilate, isn't he? Uh, I struggled with Pilate on, the, uh, on the, the last days of Jesus' teaching, and I've come to the conclusion that he's a dirty dog. That's my conclusion with him. Uh, he's probably the typical politician. I don't know. But uh, the mistreatment of, of Jesus uh, was immense. And the soldiers took him away into the palace, that is, the praetorium, and they called together the whole Roman cohort. Uh, and that's about 450 men out of a garrison of 5,000. They had a garrison of 5,000, and they have 5,000 support. That's a 10,000-person uh, garrison. Uh, from looking at it and from watching YouTube and everything, I don't think where the Dome of the Mount is the place where that was. Okay, I think that was, the, that was the, where the Romans stayed. That was their fort. In verse 17, And they dressed him up in purple, and after weaving a crown of thorns, they put it on him, and they began to acclaim him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they kept beating his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling and bowing before him. There's Jerusalem thorns. They're real long, and they put that on his head, and then they started beating him with the reed. Not very nice. Not pretty, was it? He had blood coming down everywhere. And after they had mocked him, they took the purple, off him and put his garments on him and they led him out to be crucified and they pressed into service a passerby by coming from the country Simon of Cyrene the father of Alexander and Rufus to bear his cross why did he do that didn't have the strength he's beaten to a pulp he's beaten to a pulp couldn't carry his cross in verse 22, and they brought him to a place, Golgotha, which is translated place of a skull. And they tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. 
MERS what? Sedative. MERS is a sedative. It would numb the pain, wouldn't it? Jesus didn't want to numb the pain, did he? He wanted to pay the full price. <coughs> didn't, want to, didn't want to take the easy way out on this. In verse 24, And they crucified him, and dividing up his garments among themselves, casting lots for them, to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription on the Jews against him read, The King of the Jews. Who made that description? Who did that? Pilate did it, didn't he? Yeah, Pilate did it. In verse 27, And they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, And he was numbered with transgressors. And that's in Isaiah 53, 12. And those passing by were hurling abuse at him, wagging their heads, saying, Ha! You who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes, were mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let this Christ the King of Israel now come down from the cross so that we may see and believe and those who were crucified with him were casting the same insult at him. Even if Jesus would have come down from the cross, they wouldn't have believed, would they? Amen. They wouldn't have believed. Amen. Luke 16.30, it talks about the rich man and Lazarus. And the rich man says, uh, no, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. <laughs> And he said to them, if, and Abraham said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they persuade it if someone rises from the dead. They're not going to listen no matter what happens. Revelation 11.3 uh, talks about God's two witnesses. They didn't believe them either, did they? Well, in verse 33, And when the sixth hour had come, darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour. I want to say this sixth hour is this noon. <clears throat> But I've looked that up, and there's some question whether it's Roman time or other times. And so that's not clear cut. That's not clear cut. I want to say the sixth hour is noon, fell over the whole land until the ninth hour. That would be 3 o'clock. And I'm not sure that's correct. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Alami, Alami, Lama, Sabachthani. Close enough, which is translated, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me. Why is he saying that? Because he has the sin of the world on him, doesn't he? He has all the sin of us on him. And what does God do? What does the Holy Spirit do? He pulls back. He pulls back. Must have been an unusual feeling for Jesus, wasn't it? Never experienced that before. That's why he's crying out here. You know, God treats Jesus the same way he would treat us if we had sin on us. He pulls back. And that's what will happen if we have sin, we go into glory. Or we won't get into glory, but we have sin, we die. Jesus, they're gonna, God's going to pull back from us. Verse 35, And when some of the bystanders heard it, they began saying, Behold, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave him a drink, saying, Let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry, and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Top to bottom. The veil. The veil separates the holy place from the holy of holies. And it's a big cloth. It's a woven cloth. And it's split from the top like a finger went down and it opened up. And the holies of holy represents God's presence. That's where they talked with God. The high priest talked with God. The high priest went in once a year with animal blood. But now since that opened up, we have access to the Holy of Holies through Jesus' blood. We have access to talk to God and Jesus anytime we want, don't we? Amen. Amen. In verse 39, And when the centurion who was standing right in front of him saw the way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. I was meditating on right in front of him. That's an interesting thought, is it? Right in front of Jesus during the suffering. My, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh. Verse 40, And there were some women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, and Les and Joseph, and Salome. 
And when he was in Galilee, they used to follow him and minister to him. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. Verse 42, And when evening had already come, because it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, they would do burial preparations after the Sabbath. And so we're going to see that here. In, uh, in verse 43, Joseph of Arimathea came, a prominent member of the council, who himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. And he gathered up courage and went in before Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate wondered if he was dead by this time. And summoning the centurion, he questioned him as to whether he was already dead. And ascertaining this from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. And Joseph brought a linen cloth and took him and wrapped him in the linen cloth and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Why is the linen cloth? They took Jesus' clothes, didn't they? They said they divided his clothes and uh, he didn't have any clothes. And so that's why they put him in the cloth. I think bear cloth is correct too. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph were looking on to see where he was laid. Why are they looking on? Because they have to do the preparation for prayer. They're going to anoint him with spices. They've got spices they're going to, we're going to see here. They wanted to anoint him. They didn't get to do that, did they? Because he arose from the dead. Well, we're talking about the shed blood of Jesus, the broken body. Uh, under Pastor Cho's preparation prayer. I teach on this prayer. It's on the website. And it's just wonderful. I use that before I do my regular prayer list. It talks about Jesus shed blood. And these are the six things that the benefits of Jesus' blood. We get one, forgiveness of our sins, right? We all know that. We get delivered from the power of Satan and the world. The power of Satan and the world. The power of the world is the young ladies. Okay, that's the power of the world. Then draw you in. We get healing of all our sicknesses and diseases. We get redeemed from the Adamic curse. You understand that when Adam sinned, we were cursed. We're redeemed from that. We're giving the blessings of Abraham. Who was Abraham? Abraham was the richest man in the world. That's who he was, and we're giving his blessings. And then finally, uh, the blood delivered us from death and hell, didn't it? Just wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, summary of chapter 15. Uh, again, Mark is an action gospel, and there's a lot of action here. Jesus is tried by the Romans, sentenced to death, and crucified. He's died, and he's buried. Thank you, Jesus, for your death on the cross that allows us to have forgiveness of sin and eternal home in heaven with you. Praise God. Hello, friends. This is Homer Knox again. I hope you enjoyed this video teaching. The question I have for you is, is your name written in the book of life? Are you born again? And are your sins forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ? Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He suffered and died under Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He was buried for three days and three nights. And he rose from the dead in power. And he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, according to the scriptures. There is salvation in no one else. If you have not done so, now, now is the time to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Or if you have walked away from this salvation and want to have your name rewritten in the book of life, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior. Come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you to cleanse me with your precious blood. Thank you for giving me this salvation. Thank you for making me a new person, and thank you for the Holy Spirit now living inside of me. Amen and amen. If you prayed this prayer from your heart for the first time, you're now born again, you're saved, you're part of the Christian family. Praise God. Welcome. If you prayed this prayer after slipping away, congratulations, you're back in the kingdom, you're back in the fold. There's another teaching on the menteachingmen.com website entitled, I Just Got Saved, Now What? And that video will help you on your new walk with Jesus Christ. Also, there are other videos on the Men Teaching Men website which would help you in your daily walk. God bless you.